I've appreciated this campaign. I appreciate the gentleman next to me. I appreciate his willingness to uh, extend himself and be a candidate for mayor. Uh, I want to be your mayor. Uh, I very much want to serve on behalf of the town. I think if you look at my uh, overall record of performance uh, and what has been entrusted uh, to me by the people of Braintree in terms of a selectman, a state representative, and as a state official, as the director of the state lottery, uh, I, I hope that I've earned that trust. And I've tried every day in which to uh, offer uh, direction and positiveness on your behalf. I'm a worker, and I want to close with a, with a poem uh, that I hope indicates uh, the fact that I am a worker. The man who wants a garden fair, or small or very big, with flowers growing here and there, must bend his back and dig. The things are mighty few on earth that wishes can obtain. Whatever we want of any work, we, we've got to work to gain. It matters not what goal you seek, it's secret here reposes. You've got to dig from week to week to get results or roses. I want results for Braintree. I want to work on your behalf for a better Braintree. And I ask you to vote on November 6th. Thank you. Thank you very much. I couldn't interrupt a poem, I'm sorry. So we will um, offer you another few seconds so that we can be even and fair. But that, that was just not something I could interrupt. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. All I have a limerick, so I'll just use it. Well, I'm going to use my, my comment. But I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be getting more questions. And I think that is that is unfortunate because this is a critical race right. at a critical time for our community. I was hoping to talk about the differences between my, my opponent and myself, the differences in our leadership. Joe talks about serving in the lottery. I want to talk about the $3 million deficit that he ran up on a $100,000 program. You know, these are the things that we need to get to. It's not just our leadership style, it's about the successes that we've had and the problems that we've had. I come to you, as I've said before, as someone with significant service to the public. I am quite simply a businessman who has served his community for the last 18 years. And with that comes an ethic of responsibility, of accountability, and making sure you make things work with whatever it is that you've been granted. So I'd like to thank the League again for the chance to come before you today. We need to have more debates. We need to have more substantive discussion on the differences that exist between us. I would ask you again for your vote on Tuesday, November 6th, as the independent and dependable candidate. Thank you. Joe, you served for many years on transportation. And there's a well-documented well -documented article in the Boston Globe that talks about legislation you filed to benefit the vendors of the big dig, and some would say to the detriment of uh, Mass Turnpike and obviously to, to those of us that are served by those agencies. Boston Globe reported that you had filed legislation that they felt favored Bechtel and you took funds from Bechtel contractors and things like that. How can the voters be sure that your interests are going to be with the residents and not with the hundreds of thousands of dollars that were given to you by people outside of the town? First of all, uh did not receive hundreds of thousands of dollars, Joe. Uh, every campaign contribution that I've received throughout my career uh, has come through uh, in a way that qualifies in terms of uh, the office of campaign. I'm sorry, um, people can't hear you. Can you just hold that close to, you, to your mouth? Every campaign contribution that I've ever received has come through a uh, qualified way for the office of campaign and political finance in a lawful way. Uh, so in terms of uh, suggesting uh, that there might be something um, inappropriate there. Uh, you're way off base, John. Uh, the other thing that I would uh, suggest to you is, is that in, 19, in 2002, I was the first elected official uh, to call for a review of the finances of the Central Lottery. I was the first elected official to say that the leak at the Fourth Point Channel uh, would cause issues as well as not uh, allow for the viability uh, of the cost of the project. Uh, and throughout this campaign, throughout my career, I have represented the people of Braintree uh, with uh, passion, with commitment, with focus, uh, and with quality. And the contributions that I've received throughout this campaign have come from over 500 Braintree families uh, who have given to me their support, both financially uh, and otherwise. And I've walked this town, and I've seen uh, what we can do in order to make Braintree become a better community. I don't have Joe, uh, a multi-millionaire, who is uh, funding my campaign. Uh, I am working uh, in a way that reaches out to the people of Braintree in a thoughtful way to try to be their first mayor. 
Thank you. This tower down forward. Thank you. Well, I uh, appreciate uh, the fact you asked your question. I'm going to remain positive uh, as I have done uh, throughout this campaign. I'm going to remain positive as I have done uh, throughout this campaign. Uh, Joe, we talked about uh, the need uh, to have a strong uh, system in terms of uh, government, uh, in terms of having uh, focus towards quality. Uh, I've laid out a plan in terms of a full audit, a full review, a full top to bottom uh, recasting uh, of our town budget. And I've looked specifically at areas in which we can save some money, and I've talked about those specific plans throughout the campaign. Uh, I would ask you, um, do you agree with the full audit, number one, which is something that I've talked about continuously, and number two, uh, what what steps would you take to offer some type of positive view for Braintree uh, over the next four years? Uh, to the other question, that's a simple answer. Any businessman worth his salt is going to say, give me my numbers. Let me know where we're at, let me know where the deficiencies are, and let me know where we can improve. To, to offer that as a campaign pledge to me is the most basic thing you can say. So yes, audits work, audits are necessary. Right. And audits wouldn't just be a one-time thing with me as mayor. With regard to the system that I would build, I've been very clear about the fundamental principles that I believe in and the fundamental way that the mayor needs to build this government. Some of the ways that we can save money, I've been very clear about. When I served on the school committee back in the late 80s and early 90s, we needed a budgeting tool that would help us get through the tough times. That's program-based budgeting. That's allowing the men and women who are responsible for their departments to know exactly where the money's coming in, where it's being allocated, and where the deficiencies are. By knowing all that, you're going to have stronger budgetary resources and stronger skill uh, capabilities in creating a budget. Government needs to be about accountability. The government needs to be about how we're going to service the community and the men and women and how we're going to account for our actions. That's why I asked the question that I did. You know, there were men and women in businesses in western part of the states that have given my opponent money. And he's used that money in this campaign. He's granted he's raised more money since then. But you know, the multi-million dollar campaign person that's funding me, please introduce yourself. Thank you. I need more. Thank you very much.